Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about amino acid metabolism. So, quick recap of amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and the basic structure of an amino acid consists of a central alpha carbon, which is attached to an amino group, a carboxyl group, hydrogen, and a variable R group. So. Normally, the body amino acid pool in a normal healthy adult has 100 grams of proteins. Because they are the building blocks of proteins, the majority of amino acids are utilized to form proteins. And because nearly the same amount of protein synthesized in the body is same as the protein breakdown, most of the amino acids are formed by breakdown of these proteins. The old and damaged proteins are tagged with a peptide called ubiquitin, which facilitates their degradation. Those amino acids with pest sequences undergo rapid degradation. Pest sequences meaning those with a sequence of proline, glutamine, serine and threonine are rapidly degraded because they are rapidly tagged by ubiquitin peptides. Because the protein loss from the body is approximately 30 to 50 grams per day as urea in the urine, we require dietary protein. The recommended daily allowance is usually 1 gram per kg per day. But a normal human usually consumes more than that. The normal dietary protein intake in a person is usually 40 to 100 grams per day which then enters the body amino acid pool. Synthesis of non-essential amino acids also contributes to the body amino acid pool. These amino acids are utilized to form new proteins and also for the synthesis of non-protein compounds like purines and pyrimidines. 10 to 15% of the body's daily energy requirements come from proteins. Amino acids are also useful in carbohydrate and fat synthesis. Protein metabolism is different from carbohydrate and lipid metabolism because unlike carbohydrates and lipids, there is no storage form of amino acids. And that is why any excess amino acids in the body are excreted in the form of urea. Urea biosynthesis occurs in four major steps. Transamination, oxidative deamination of glutamate, transport of ammonia and disposal of ammonia. Transamination is the transfer of the alpha amino group from one amino acid to a keto acid to form another pair of amino acids and keto acids. So for example, we have amino acid 1 which along with a keto acid donates its alpha amino group to the keto acid. Hence, this keto acid now becomes a new amino acid. And the amino acid becomes a new keto acid. So, the amino groups from the amino acids are funneled to form glutamate. This is because the amino groups will release to form ammonia which is toxic to the body. All the amino acids in the body undergo transamination to form glutamate. This is because it is the only amino acid in the body which can undergo significant oxidative deamination. Examples of transamination reactions include aspartate to form its corresponding keto acid oxaloacetic acid in the presence of enzyme aspartate transaminase. It is a freely reversible reaction and requires a cofactor called as pyridoxal phosphate. Glutamate formation is inevitable. Similarly, ALT is another transaminase 
which converts alanine to pyruvate. The second step, the other step remains the same, that is formation of glutamate is inevitable. It occurs in presence of alanine transaminase enzyme which requires paradoxal phosphate. Transamination occurs in all tissues of the body in the cytoplasm. This glutamate is then transported through the blood and tissues to reach the liver where it undergoes oxidative deamination. It is transported in the form of glutamine because glutamine is easily diffusible across the tissues. The glutamate is converted to alanine only in case of skeletal muscle which then enters the liver to undergo oxidative deamination and the ammonia enters the urea cycle. So functions of transamination. The main function is that it causes the accumulation of the toxic amino group as non-toxic glutamate. It is also required for formation of non-essential amino acids from the respective keto acids. For example, as it is a reversible reaction, oxaloacetic acid can be used to form aspartate. Similarly, pyruvate can be used for alanine synthesis. Alpha-ketoglutarate is used for synthesis of glutamate. The amino acids that do not undergo transamination are proline, hydroxyproline, threonine and lysine. Features of transamination. This is a quick recap. The enzyme required is transaminase which requires a coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate. It occurs in all tissues of the body in the cytoplasm. The mechanism of transamination is the ping pong ball mechanism. It is a freely reversible reaction. Apart from the alpha amino group, the delta amino group may also undergo transamination. An example of this is the delta ornithine aminotransferase enzyme. The deficiency of this enzyme can cause gyrate atrophy of retina and choroid. Pyridoxin can be used for treatment because the coenzyme required is pyridoxal phosphate. Next, so we did this part in which the proteins are broken down to form amino acids and these amino acids concentrate their amon the amino group in the form of glutamate. This is called as transamination reaction. It occurs in the cytosol of all tissues. This glutamate then reaches the liver in the form of glutamine where the glutamine is again converted to glutamate so that it can undergo oxidative deamination. Oxidative deamination occurs in the liver mitochondria with the help of enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase which helps the release of ammonia from the glutamate so that it can enter the urea cycle. This enzyme requires NADP plus and it is a reversible reaction. Glutamate dehydrogenase is inhibited by ATP, GTP, NADH and also by steroid hormones and thyroid hormones. It is activated by ADP and GDP. A minor pathway of deamination of amino acids is the L-amino oxidase pathway which occurs in the liver and the kidney. This requires FMN in contrast to glutamate dehydrogenase which requires NADP+. Non-oxidative deamination also requires pyridoxal phosphate. For example, for hydroxyl containing amino acids like serine and threonine, dehydrases help in non-oxidative deamination in which in addition to the hydroxyl group the removal of ammonia also occurs. Similarly histidase enzyme converts histidine to uroconate and 
in case of sulfur containing amino acids like cysteine desulfhydrases help in formation of pyruvate by removing the SH group and the amino group So we did the two extremes that is transamination in which amino acids form glutamate and oxidative deamination which occurs in the liver mitochondria in the presence of enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase to release ammonia which then enters the urea cycle. Coming on to the transport of ammonia. Ammonia is transported as glutamine because it is easily diffusible across tissues. Why is free ammonia toxic to cells? This is because if we look at the action of glutamate dehydrogenase, which is a reversible reaction, in case there is increased ammonia, it will lead to increased glutamate synthesis. This will cause depletion of alpha ketoglutarate, which is required for the TCA cycle which helps in ATP synthesis. Decreased alpha ketoglutarate will affect the TCA cycle resulting in decreased ATP which is required for brain function and increased glutamate will cause increased synthesis of glutamine which being osmotically active can cause cerebral edema. So the transport of ammonia across the body occurs in the form of glutamine. This is called as the first line trapping of ammonia. Glutamine synthetase is present in most tissues of the body including the brain. It requires ATP and is a non-reversible reaction. The glutamine then travels to the liver and also to the kidney and intestine where the highest concentrations of the glutaminase enzyme are present to release ammonia and form glutamate. This ammonia then enters into the urea cycle or in case of kidney is excreted into the urine. In the intestine, the ammonia released enters the liver via the portal blood and undergoes oxidative deamination to form urea via the urea cycle. But in case of skeletal muscle, these glutamate molecules are converted to alanine which is then transported to the liver via the blood. So from the starting, if we see in all tissues of the body, amino acids undergo transamination in the presence of aminotransferase enzymes which require PLP or pyridoxal phosphate to form glutamate. In case of muscles, this glutamate is converted to alanine in the presence of enzyme alanine aminotransferase. Alanine then enters the liver. But in case of other tissues of the body, glutamate synthesis occurs via transamination and it is converted then to glutamine which then enters the intestine, kidney or the liver. Because the kidney and intestine have high amounts of glutaminase enzyme, there is degradation of glutamine to form glutamate and release of ammonia. The ammonia in kidney is then excreted via the urine whereas in case of intestine it is produced by the intestinal bacteria as well. It is transported by the portal blood to reach the liver where this free ammonia enters the urea cycle directly. The glutamine that enters the liver undergoes degradation to form glutamate which then undergoes oxidative deamination by the presence of enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase which is a reversible reaction with the formation of NH3 which then enters the urea cycle. Thanks for watching the video and if you liked it then please like, subscribe and share.